Yeah, so my thoughts on Withering Wave so far. Um, there is definitely some very, very good about it. And there is definitely some stuff that is evident of it being in development. <laughs> I'll put it that way. It was bad. Okay, straight up bad. Um, what's great about And the things that are good are actually great. So that's gives me a lot of hopium for the game. I think there's a ton of potential here for the game to actually be quite good when it comes out, provided they deal with some of the huge problems that we are seeing right now in the beta, which I hope that that is the point of the beta and that they will. Um, the, the combat is fantastic. Uh, it was fairly easy to pick up the tells that you have in combat of like when to dodge, when you can parry. That's obvious, even to me, like a brand new player. Uh, it's easy to pick up. It's very... Um, impactful the summoning system is one, it's probably one of the best things about the game uh, with the monsters that you can collect and summon your echoes are great um it's very very satisfying to do combat and i looked forward to doing combat every single time um character switching in combat is amazing in fact this there's like this mechanic where if you build up enough energy then when you switch characters you can do this huge attack in between switching characters which i think is fantastic uh, because that makes switching it makes switching even fun it makes thinking about when you want to switch part of it uh part of your combat decision making and it's very enjoyable to do so love that um sound effects in combat are great uh combat all around is very very good the shape shifting it allows you to change up combat and however you want to and then like you can collect basically different little Pokemon. Like, I found it quite fun to run around the world and find a monster that looks cool, and you're like, oh man, can I kill that monster? And then use its essence and use it as a summon. And yeah, you can. Uh, so far, I don't think I've encountered any creature that you could not do that with, which was amazing. I loved that. Um, open world follows the formula of Genshin, so that makes it good. Genshin has one of the best open world experiences. So if you follow that, obviously you're gonna have a pretty good open world experience. So, I mean, there's, you know, that, that is good and bad. On the one hand, it means that the formula works and running around will be fun to do because you're running around collecting little things and chests and stuff. But on the other hand, I, I feel like it's too much like Genshin and there are definitely things that they could have innovated with, but didn't. And I don't understand why. Like you, I feel like maybe even a different uh, mechanic than gliding or like different ways to get around the world should be looked into. Uh, it doesn't have to be that close to Genshin. But if you have a choice between follow Genshin formula or don't have a good open world, it would be better to follow the Genshin formula. <laughs> But would be better than that is maybe be inspired by a Genshin formula and then add in your own special touches that reflect the world that you're trying to create and the elements in your world. Like, uh, it seems that the world is based around this, the story seems to be based around this idea of sound and resonance. And um, I feel like that's something that could have um, worked into a bit more with the way different puzzles work or the way exploration could work. Um, but. That seems like some missed opportunities there. Um, the general movement in combat, yeah, I talked uh, already, like moving around in combat is very fun. Combat are, is, is a winner. Combat is uh, gonna be the core of the game, so it's good that that is good. <laughs> the uh, artistically, of course, it's similar to Genshin, but it, it is following its own mood and vibe because it's this post-apocalyptic space. It is uh, less saturated, it's less bright, less cheery, and um, I think that's, that's very good because it distinguishes it, and I think having a completely different art direction will help it be providing something new to the market we haven't seen before. I, the, and some of the enemies look really neat. Um, this like huge titan monster that you defeat and you can turn into to like punch the ground. I love that. That's probably one of my favorite ones. Uh, but that I also noticed that there's some, I guess this doesn't really matter in a beta, but some of the monsters that you could 
use and equip, we're hitting like a wet noodle and just not doing a lot. So I feel like maybe some of the damage scaling should be looked at. Um, the dodging, getting not doing knockbacks, parrying, all that's great. Now, as for the bat, now I've, I've talked about all the, all the, oh, also the spider car. <laughs> The spider car was very fun to discover, so I hope, uh, I, I like being surprised <laughs> in these kinds of ways, so that was fun. Um, but as for the bat, the story is not written. Uh, I, I don't think it's fair right now for people to say that the story is bad, because in English at least, the story is not written. It has literally not been done. Uh, translations have been done, but not localization there is no it does not appear that there has been english localization that has been done and this means that uh what we're seeing in the quests is a lot of exposition with nobody has gone through to like plan out narratively how characters will talk how um, information will be released to the player and at what pacing and so it's just i feel like it's it's so early it feels so early for that, that you can't even judge it. You can't even judge the story. Um, because there's like, there's there's typos, there are there's tons of problems with the quest text. Um, the tutorials are way too many. And not only, are, not only are the tutorials way too many, but when they're appearing is, I think, worse than the fact there are too many. Because if you're getting premium currency for every time that you see a tutorial, then that's a, people won't be mad that there's a lot. But the problem is that the tutorials are often popping up at times when you do not need that on your screen. Like you're trying, you're you're trying to sort out what is happening to you in combat. You're even trying to read text that's on the screen or dialogue, and you can't because there's a tutorial thing that's popped up and. You can't, uh, pausing to look at the tutorial does not actually pause the game. And the enemies are still attacking you. Slower, but they're still attacking you, which is horrible. Uh, you cannot pause the game during the combat. It's, it's very, that's bad. It's horrible. <laughs> they need to fix that. Uh, of course, no VA right now in the English version. Um, the UI is bad. Uh, I think the UI is just straight up really bad because it's um, not obvious where to go look at things. Uh, a lot of the menus look very confusing and where your eye is drawn to look is not the place where you're supposed to be looking and there's hidden information all over the place and it's, it's just a bit of a mess. The UI needs to work, a lot of work. Um, the... Uh, music, I think, was needs some variety because there were some cutscenes where, and of course, like I said, the story is not done, even not even close to even the beginning of being done. It's not even drafted in English. But there were some cases where it seemed like we were having a serious conversation, and the music felt not right for some of the same things that were going on. Um, we had to un basically stop halfway through the story because I basically chat was getting frustrated and I was getting frustrated because of the lack of actual either interesting things happening in the story is just so much fluff and lack of a uh, combat there's just not a lot to, of fighting going on and so it needs a lot of work the story needs a lot a lot of work but what's good uh, on the you know <laughs> What's good is that as much as bogged down that we got in every single character wanted to tell you their entire life story and giving it information dump on you every time <laughs> you open a quest, uh, that, that became very exhausting and tiring. And I ran off into the open world to go attack some stuff. And immediately I was like, yes, oh yeah, but I remember there's things that I really like about this game. And like you... As soon as you do combat again, you're like, okay, actually the game is, is pretty good. In, in some ways, <laughs> it's worth, it makes, 
it reminded me that, okay, well, the game still has a lot of potential. So that's good. That's the core. We got a good core of combat to build the game around still. Um, but the story needs help for sure. So yeah, uh, other things. Um, what's crazy is that in spite of all of the information overload that I was getting from characters about the world, I still felt like I don't know that much about the world. <laughs> Because a lot of the information that they're giving you is fluff and unnecessary information. It's just stuff that should be in an archive. Genshin Impact has an archive where you can go through and you can look into uh, lore descriptions of uh, items. You can look into story dis um, histories for characters and all this kind of stuff. I don't know if this game has that, um, but it needs it. And uh, basically, it needs to put all that shit in an archive, like half of it or more in an archive so that uh, you can look deeper into details if you want to, but we need to, like, the, the information that you get in the main story needs to be trimmed hard. Uh, there has an archive, says so Lautrox. Is this... Finding anything in the UI has not been easy. Database? Sounds like it could be it. No. No, that's not it. But the, my point stands. My point stands. It needs to be here. Uh, what else? Anything else that comes to mind here? I'm thinking. I think that's about covers everything that I uh, have noticed so far and feel so far. Um, game just not ready for release anytime soon. I don't think it should come out this year. Uh, I think it needs at least two, maybe two, maybe next year. Maybe next year it could. Um, two years would be better to fix pacing and things like that. Um, so yeah, I think that they should also dial back how similar it is to Genshin Impact. I don't think that they will. Um, but some things are just so blatantly taken directly from Genshin that it feels really weird to not address that. Like, they should... There's some cases where it's completely unnecessary for it to be that similar. The combat is where the game is at its best and they need to do more with that. And have players in combat more often. Uh, and like just improve how much information is given to the player it's just it's bloated with information it's bloated with information in the tutorials it's bloated with information in the quests it's just you don't need all that you need way 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 less of that and uh basically i think it, go in the direction of tutorials that is you do something and then that is how you learn about it not by reading, but more by showing and having the player do the thing so they learn about it. Um, if you think about like games, a lot of the best games tutorials are ones where it's like, okay, hold down R and it doesn't take you out of the game to do that. And while, by holding down R, you can see that you can fire like a charged arrow, right? Or it's like, okay, hold down control, and by holding on control, you can see that your character is now crouching. Without going into a tutorial to do that, you're in the game, you're doing it. That is, you're seeing what's happening. That is how, I think that's a better way to do a tutorial a lot, if you can. More like that uh, would be better. Um, stuff that's on screen, that doesn't take you into a menu. Well, that's about it. Um, is, I don't know if Chad has any, uh, any thoughts on it too but uh, I'm going to be taking feedback to the Withering Waves team because they asked me for that how memorable are characters for you? For me they don't seem to have much personality. Uh, not memorable uh, but there's there was a character who was memorable and it was, well there's two characters that were memorable is a little girl who's super bright pink because she stands out and then that guy who was with her, with the white hair, who's like winking and like being a being a Kaya, 
<laughs> Being a charmer guy. Those were the most memorable characters so far. Uh, the way that some of the characters interact with you early on is very weird. Uh, like this character, uh, Chixia. I hope they rework some of the things that happen because it's very, very strange how she, her job is to escort people in and out of town, I guess. And then she blows up at you for no reason. And then she apologizes immediately after. Yeah, some of that was odd. Can we look at the database? Oh yeah. Uh, so characters. This guy I liked, but then when we started talking to him, he's he was doing a basically a lore dump on us too. <laughs> uh, so much info. So much info so fast. And yet so little info. Uh um this was the character I remember. Fedora guy. He's on the banner right now. You can't you can't uh I can't spin him? No, I don't think so. No, I don't think I can. Oh you have to, you have to do Yeah, I can't spin him. This is the only way. So they all have um, icons near them of like, I guess, elements that they use, but I don't know what those mean yet. Yeah, this is the guy I remember. Him and Anki, these were more memorable. Um, this character, introducing her felt like a bit of a mess because we went on this incredibly boring quest with setting up the satellites and then you do combat with her and it's amazing but none of that is explained. Why she has the abilities that she does. Um, Yang Yang. Very cool design. But, uh, I don't know, like, I feel like maybe some of these characters need more quirks. Because Chixia, yeah, as strange as she acted towards you she does have a bit more personality because she was more rude in the beginning <laughs> like having that as a quirk uh is more memorable have you seen Shixia's old design uh no i haven't Sh is that something i should check The thing is, here's something that I've learned about Genshin, right? If you want to have a gacha game where people are motivated to pull for characters, you cannot do this without good writing, very good writing, that makes people care a lot about that character. Like, you need to be charmed by the character in some way, you need to be intrigued by a character in some way, um, just having cool uh, artistic designs won't be enough to get people to pull on the characters. Uh, if you want Simp to win, uh, this is this requires actually pretty skilled writing to happen. And uh, right now, as I said, I think it's too early to judge the story of this game because it's not been written. It has not been written in English. Um, I don't know what the state of it is in Chinese, but I really, really, really hope that they invest into quality writers for this game if they actually want to sell the characters <laughs> because that's what it's gonna come down to yep uh the market for this game is hardcore players so that's their market maybe it definitely has some uh potential it has a lot of potential there are some basic core things about the game that are fantastic. So, all I can say is 
I'll wait. I'll wait and see how development goes. But I definitely do not think it's ready for release anytime soon. That's it. I'm gonna uh, end here today. I will be back tomorrow. We're gonna do Honkai Star Ale. So excited. I'm super hyped for that. Next Genshin stream should be Monday. Unless anything changes. Yeah, so we're gonna uh, raid Asmund. Okay, and I will head out here today. For See y'all tomorrow for Honkai Star Ale. It's gonna be fun. Did you have fun and enjoyed it? Yeah, absolutely. I did have fun doing the combat, and I definitely had fun collecting characters in the Pokemon stuff and doing the shape-shifting. That was very fun. That part was very, very fun. <laughs>